All right, Carolyn, take it away. All right, so welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome to our pop-up training about host coaching. And Becky, thank you so much for setting this up for all of us. Um, William, I, know, I appreciate it very much. I'm sure I speak for everyone. This is just helpful organization-wide. Um, so are you guys ready to increase your show average and make more money? Who's ready? Let me see some hands. Who's ready? All right. So, oh my goodness. Big background noise. Um, so why coach your hosts? Like, what's the point? Would you hand your teenager the keys to the car without sending them to driving school first? Probably not. Um, would you buy a, a barbecue grill at Home Depot, hand the box to your husband and say, here, build this, but not give him the directions? No, because we all know how well that works out, because he'll go for it without the directions. And then when all is said and done, there's going to be 14 little nuts and bolts left, and it's not going to turn off. So we coach our hosts so that they will be prepared for success, so that they will know what it takes to have a successful show. Um, a perfect example as to why this is important. Um, I had one of my very, very first shows. I just kind of said, okay, invite your friends and we'll see what happens. And so we saw what happened. She had three people show up. They came to eat. They didn't know that it was anything to do with shopping. They didn't buy anything. And she spent like 50 bucks on ingredients and beer and wine and got nothing. So it's important that we teach our hosts the steps to follow so that when followed, they will, incre they will lead to increased outside orders, higher attendance, increased guest sales, all of which combined will lead to happier hosts, future bookings, more thousand dollar shows, increased recruiting and higher commission checks for you. So the most important thing I want you to remember and write this down and post it in your office. Today's preparation determines tomorrow's achievements. One of my favorite ways to explain that is we make our money during host coaching. We just show up at the cooking show to pick it up. So for starters, you wanna take your business seriously so that cancellations will be minimized. You want your hosts to know that you take your business seriously. If they think that you just oh, you know, I just kind of play around in the business for a good time. They're not going to take you very seriously. If you let them know right off the bat during your show intro, throughout your show, this is, this is my business. This isn't just a hobby. I do this to make money. I do this for, you know, to make a difference. They will take you seriously. Um, another one to jot down. Five plus 15 plus five. It's the five fifteen five formula that I teach my hosts. We want five orders before the show. We want 15 orders at the show. And we want five orders after the show. So five orders before the show are from people that tell you right off the bat that they're not going to be able to come. 15 orders at the show are guests who come to the show. Now, don't tell me I'm going to have 15 guests there, so I'm going to have 15 orders because it doesn't work that way. Not everybody orders. So if you want 15 orders at the show, you want 18 to 20 guests at the show. And remind your hosts, couples or people who live in the same household count as one guest because they're shopping for one, one kitchen. So I tell my hosts when they collect the 5155, they are for sure going to hit $215 shopping spree. So who do we invite? I tell my, my hosts to invite 40 guests and that's where they panic. So here's exactly how it goes down. I'm just going to run you through step by step how I do it when I book a show. Um, Becky, you are my my upcoming host. Tamara, you are the host at the party we're at right now. So at Tamara's party, Becky decides she wants to book a show. So at the show, when initially booked, I give Becky what I call the confirmation packet. And it looks like this. And I'm going to put all these documents up on the screen and I will share them. This is the 50 in five, it tells our host how to come up with 50 friends in five minutes. Because they all go, you want me to invite 40 people? Well, look, you're gonna come up with 50 in five minutes, it's not easy. Five friends, five neighbors, five relatives, five casual acquaintances, five people from your social groups. Example, sports teams, clubs, exercise, class, PTA. Five contacts through church or temple. Five people who have invited you to a party. Five contacts through your kids. 
parents, playmates, playground, field trips, sports, teachers, aides, five coworkers and former coworkers, and five old friends you've been meaning to call. When you break it down into the little bites, instead of come up with 50 people, here's 10 little ways to come up with five, it's a lot easier. But remember, I told her she wanted 40. Now I'm saying 50. It's kind of just building. Um, also in here, I include the host and guest specials for the month. I include a blank guest list. And this matches an Excel spreadsheet that I use. So if they fill this out, I can just plug it right into my Excel spreadsheet. And I ask them, hey, Becky, do you use Excel? Great, I'm just gonna send you a template. And you just plug in each person's name, address, email. Um, and Becky's gonna say to me, oh my gosh, I don't have everyone's addresses. Say it, Becky. I don't have everyone's addresses. I know, I know. In this day and age when everything is done digitally, we generally don't have people's addresses. And because everything is done digitally, we don't want to do it digitally. We want to stand out. Because I know, Becky, you're probably thinking, I'll just do a Facebook blast. I'll just do a group text. And I'm going to tell you right, right away, it doesn't work. Everybody and their brother is trying to sell something online. And if you just send a Facebook blast or send a text to everyone, it's just going to get lost in the shuffle of everything else. But what people don't get anymore is mail that isn't junk or bills. So for that reason, I'm going to have you collect everyone's addresses and we're going to send out evites. I'm sorry, we're going to send out postcards to everybody so they get something in the mail that stands out. But I know you don't have everyone's address. So here's the trick. See this slip of paper that's in the packet I'm giving you? This slip of paper gives you the exact words to say to each person to get their address. And what I'm going to have you do you know, we're gonna finish your order right now. You're gonna grab a snack and sit down, shoot a text to everybody, just cut and paste this text to everybody you know. By the time you get home from today's party, you'll have everybody's mailing address. And what this says is, hi there, I'm planning a party and I need your mailing address so I can send your invitation. Please get back to me ASAP with your mailing address so I can get your invitation in the mail to you. Thanks. You're gonna text that to each person. You're gonna email it to people you don't have cell phone numbers for. You're gonna Facebook message it to people that you're friends with on Facebook. So within an hour, you're gonna have everyone's address. It works like magic. Now you can cut and paste it into text messages to me. You can cut and paste it into email to me, Facebook message, or you can plug it right into that spreadsheet. Whatever's easiest for you, I'll make it work. And I have hosts that send it to me all different ways. And I just keep the spreadsheet up on my screen. I wanted to do, how do I do the screen share over here? I got lost, hold on, let me set up the screen share. Um, share. All right, can you guys see? So this is what the, um, the spreadsheet looks like. So I'll just plug in to each of the boxes. As Becky sends me an address through text, I'll just plug it in, save it, and then when, we're, when I'm ready to print her invitations, I will. All right, let's get rid of that. Okay, so she knows how to get the addresses. She's given this little packet and I send her on her way. I explain to her the importance of inviting 40 and she panics and I say, well, here's the thing, Becky, out of the 40 people we invite, because Lord knows, I know you don't want 40 people in your kitchen. Not a problem. I promise you, I've been doing this for quite a while, and my experience has taught me that only about 20 to 30% of the people you invite are actually going to show up. So that means if you invite 40, we're going to get about 8 to 12 people coming. Our goal is to have 15 to 20 shopping guests at your party. So I say go for 50, not 40. If you want to come up with more, even better, because you know what? I, I handle the invitations. I print them. I mail them. I put the postage on them. Not your problem. I take care of it. So you don't have to worry about getting writer's cramp. I'm also going to explain to Becky that it's important to invite from a diverse group. And Becky, please don't just invite the church ladies. Because I had a party once where her name was Shanita lovely girl invited just the church ladies and an hour before her party, the pastor got in a car wreck. He was fine, minor injuries, but everybody who was coming to the party was at the pastor's wife's bedside, sitting with her, worrying about her and him, and nobody made it to the party. Had she invited a diverse group, maybe her yoga friends, her kids' teachers, her neighbors, the church ladies, the tennis club, the, the knitting club, the girl she sees when she walks her dog, her nail tech, her hairdresser, she still would have had a party, and then when the party was over, she could have shown up at the pastor's house with some leftovers. So, 
the exact words I'm going to say to Becky before I send her on her way. And I use these exact words with every host. Becky, in order to secure your date, I'm going to need your guest list back from you within five days from today. If you get it back to me within three days with a minimum of 40 addresses on it, I'm going to have an extra free gift for you. I'm really big on bribery, girls and boys. It works. Bribery works. What do I give her is going to be the next question. A retired season's best. She's thrilled. We can get the retired season's best six for or 10 for $6 on a supply order that's 60 cents each. I slap a label on it with my contact information. I give the retired ones because they can't buy those anymore. They're like hot commodities. All right. I also used to use, and I don't quite do it anymore, but I'll show you. I used to use the sticky note system. So I used to use a, um, pull out a sticker here. I used to use a paper calendar up until about two months ago. And what I would do is I would put the party on a sticky note on her date. And I would say, okay, Becky, you're going into my planner on a sticky note. Once I get your guest list, your sticky note comes out and you go in in ink and that date is yours. But when I don't have your guest list, the date's still up for grabs. Once I get your guest list, it's yours. If I don't get your guest list within five days, I'm going to give you a call, just a you know, courtesy reminder call, and you'll let me know if I still hold that date for you and I'll give you an extra 24 to 48 hours. If at that point I don't get it, you go to the graveyard. And in the back of my calendar, there's the graveyard. Those are the people who didn't come through with their guest list and I had to let go of their date, offer it up to somebody else because I'm very, very busy. I recently switched to a digital calendar, so I just show them you're in my, you know, you're in my phone in my digital calendar. When I get your guest list, your date is firm. If I don't have your guest list within five days, I do the courtesy call and then I have to erase you and open up the date for somebody else because I only have so many dates a month that I'm available and this is my full-time gig. Um, let's see. Oh, big one. The morning after. So I booked Becky last night at last night's party at Tamara's house. I booked Becky. So this morning, I'm going to send Becky a card. It's the first thing I do the morning after a party. I get these at Dollar Tree. I just get, you know, any cute note cards that are sort of a thank you or just a blank note card. And here's what I write. And I'm going to tell you guys, I'll read it to you, but I'm going to tell you right off the bat, do not digitally send this. You're wasting your time. There's no point. If you're not going to handwrite the card and send it, there's no point in doing it. It's the act of receiving a handwritten note that knocks people's socks off. So here's what it says. Hey, Becky, just a quick note to say thank you for booking October 27th with me for your pampered check party. The best way I can show my appreciation is to partner with you to ensure the very best end result. Not only do I want you and your guests to have a blast, but I want you to earn so many free products that you're going to need to build a second kitchen. I also wanted you to know that your party will actually be qualifying me toward our next incentive trip to Disney World. How cool are you? My family really appreciates you. I'm looking forward to our time together and I'm keeping an eye out for your guest list. Warmly, Carolyn. Address it, pop it in the mail to her with a cute sticker on the outside of the envelope, you know, like a thank you, any, any kind of cute thank you. If the envelope is colored, great. If it's a white envelope, I always put some stickers on it or I write it in colorful ink just to make it stand out. How many of you get mail that isn't bills? Nobody. So when we send them, a thank you card for booking a show. They're like, oh, wow. And what is it they say? Those who feel appreciated always do more. If our host feels appreciated and Lord knows we appreciate her or him, if our host feels appreciated, they're gonna put some effort in. I also find by sending this note card, fewer cancellations. It sort of guilts them into holding their date. So that's what I do the following morning. Once I get the guest list, then and only then do I send out the host packet. I don't give out host packets at my show, and I know a lot of people do, and you know, if it works for you, great. If it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I oftentimes found that if I, sent the, if, I, if I sent her home with the host packet, I was about 50% of the time I was kissing those catalogs goodbye. When I started my business, I was a single mom. I had to really watch every penny. So back then I started not sending, guests, not sending host packets until I got the guest list. And I tell them that once I get your guest list, Becky, then I'm gonna send you a packet with some catalogs and order forms so you can collect orders from the people who can't come and lots of information about how to make your party the most successful one yet. 
that also kind of gets her thinking, oh, I really want to get my hands on those catalogs. Let me get that guest list together. So what do I put in a host packet? Currently, and until I run out of them, I'm still using the folders that we get from home office. Once I run out of those, I will just switch to the, the party planner, which is all the same info from the, the folder. It's just on a piece of paper. Um, so I mark it up like crazy in red and pink and blue marker. Um, and you got to use Sharpies on those folders because everything else smears. So I love my Sharpies. Um, I put in the left-hand pocket, I do a principal flyer invitation. And I just design, you know, it's just a basic full sheet of paper invitation. Um, I used to use the ones on Consultants Corner, then I kind of just revamped them to make them a little more personalized. Um, so she gets five copies of the paper invitation on the left-hand side. And I put a sticky note on those that says, hand these out to everybody you see. Don't leave them sitting here in this folder. They don't do you any good in the folder. Sort of guilt her into using them. Um, on the right-hand pocket, I put three outside order forms and two to three catalogs, depending on your physical mailing program. If you mail through USPS, if you use Indicia, if you use uh, stamps.com, they all kind of range differently in pricing. Um, if I can fit three and keep it low price, then I'll do three catalogs. I also put a piece of paper, let me grab that, ah, wrong one. Um, I'm sorry, I should have grabbed that one earlier. It's a slip this size. And basically what it says is bonus gift. Um, collect $250 in paid pre-orders from people who can't attend your party. Have them to me before the party and you get your choice of. And then I list, she can choose a brownie pan, um, a toaster oven stone, a personal pizza stone, or a egg cooker stone. Not the ceramic egg cooker, but the egg cooker stone. These are all items that range about 17 to $20. Actually, I think brownie pants up to 23 now. You pick your price range. But I order those when I have catalog shows going in. I use my host benefits to get those. Or if I don't have any on hand, I will tack it onto her host order at her discount. I prefer, though, to have it on hand so that I can then hand it to Becky at her show. So when I get to the show in front of all the guests, I'm going to say, you know, you guys, I totally bribed Becky to get her guest list to me. And for doing that, she's getting this awesome cookbook. And it has one of my favorite recipes in it, apple cranberry popover puff. Oh, my God. So, Becky, here you go. Thank you so much for rising to the challenge. And clearly, Becky likes a challenge because I also told her that if she had $250 in pre-orders from people who couldn't come, I would give her her choice of boom, 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 boom. And she chose boom. And I just put a ribbon on it. I'm like, here you go, Becky. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I got a brownie pan in front of all of her guests. And I'm like, girls, y'all jealous, right? We haven't even started yet. And she's already been given two gifts. Think about that. Um, what else do I put in the host packet? So I've got the order forms, the motivator to get her to collect outside orders. I put whatever the current recruiting brochure is. I don't remember the name of the one we just came out with. Um, I want to say the life tastes great, but we're beyond that one. Um, so I put a recruiting brochure. Uh, I used to put a kit credit coupon, but now the kit credit is part of that flyer. So I don't need to do that anymore. On the left-hand side, I also put instructions on how to access and utilize the host dashboard. I slap stickers and, and uh, you know, little hearts and doodles all over the outside of the folder just to make it stand out so when it's sitting on her kitchen counter, she doesn't forget it. 99% um, of these resources can be found on PC University, on Consultants Corner. Whatever can't will be posted on the Redu page. Before I let Becky go, I do say to her, um, Becky, if I need to call you to touch base, what's the best number to reach you at during the day? Or what, what language do you speak? Do you prefer text? Do you prefer Facebook Messenger? Do you use WhatsApp, Snapchat? What is, what is the best way for me to get through to you? And what, what are your work hours? What's your time frame? And I'll jot all that down on my notes about her. You know, Becky can't be reached before 8 o'clock at night. Uh, her window is between 8 and 10, and she really prefers WhatsApp or, you know, whatever. That way, I'm not emailing Becky when that's not something that she looks at. How many times are you trying to get through to a host only to find out at the party that she never looks at her emails or she doesn't check her texts? You have to find out what language she speaks. Um, okay, host information checklist. Carol, do we still have that on carolredu.com? <clears throat> You're muted. You want to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down? 
I don't know. So let me check and I'll get back to you. I'll okay. put it in the chat. Okay. Um, host information checklist. I know there was one on carolredu.com. I print out a gazillion of them. And when I find something good, I save it to my hard drive. So if it disappears off of something else, I'll always have it. Um, and I believe you can still find one on Consultants Corner. And basically, it's just a way to keep track of what you've done for each host. I've got her guest list. I've mailed out her host packet. I've done calls one, call two, call three. Um, so you, I like to keep a folder for each host. And in that folder, I keep the, the sheet and I check off everything I've done for her one by one. I am, like I said, moving to digital. So I have a little checklist that I keep on her uh, calendar page on my phone. All right, the next thing I do, once I get her guest list, well, let's actually, let's rewind a little bit. Um, so high attendance is a must. Lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people. Got it? Say it with me. Lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people, lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people. And I'll say that to Becky. I'll be like, all right, Becky, we need lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people. That's how we're going to get your free stuff. And I'll get her chanting it with me. So it sticks in her head. So how do we get lots of people? I help her develop a large guest list by using the 50 and 5. And I print the invitations for her. I use that. Let me pull it up over here. I use that spreadsheet that I showed you. I use the spreadsheet right here to print onto invitations. I don't know the invitations app. I'm using the mail merge. If you don't know how to use mail merge, it's a really cool system. Um, I only started using mail merge a year ago. I used to just write them out by hand or I would print the addresses right onto labels, but it saves me money printing them directly onto the, um, directly onto the invitation. Um, by doing the invitations for her, when Becky gives me her guest list of 20, I can say, this is a great start, Becky. Who else can we think of? Because the 20 people invited will be lucky to get six who show up. With six people showing up, yeah, you might get a $50 shopping spree. So always tie it to the numbers. More people equals more orders. More orders equals more free stuff for you. Um, I make sure to encourage Becky to have each guest invited in three different ways. Each guest is going to get a postcard from me. But it's going to come from her, but I'm the one who has the control over mailing it, make sure it goes out. But I also want each guest to get a text or an email or a Facebook message or a flyer or a personal phone call or a knock knock on their front door from Becky or a face to face invitation at work. So each guest needs to be invited in three different ways. Um, so I mail out the invitations for her. The next step I do is the post coaching letters. Are you guys all familiar with the host coaching letters? If you're not, I will post those to the team page too. Um, unfortunately, home office has done away with them. I am still very old school. I love them. I saved them to my hard drive. I've got in my hands right now the holiday version of them. Um, the other ones are under my laptop. There's the appetizers letter. There's the main dish letter. And then there's a desserts letter somewhere. And each one, they're designed by home office. They have a recipe on the right-hand side and wording on the left-hand side. All you have to do is fill in their name, sign it. So what I do is I print out one. I write on it. I make it all pretty. I write in lots of different color ink. I write a little personal note in different colors. I highlight stuff. And then I make a gazillion photocopies of this. So for each show, all I need to do is pull out the appetizer, the main dish, and the dessert, fill in Becky, fold it up, and put it in an envelope. Takes me two seconds. I do them all before the show. So as soon as I get the guest list, I mail out her post packet and I write out her three envelopes. I do the envelopes in hot pink so they stand out in her mailbox. Get whatever color you want. I don't recommend red or green because those are going to get lost at Christmas time. I try to get a color that'll be year round, will stand out. And I address all three of them. In the stamp corner, I write the date I'm gonna mail it. So what I do is if I'm if her party's on the 31st, I will mail her host packet as soon as I get her guest list. I'll send letter number one on the first, I'll send letter number two about the 15th, and I'll send letter number three five days before her party. Each of these letters keeps me in front of her. Um, it saves me if I happen to forget to call her because let's be honest, we all forget sometimes. So if I forget to make the phone call, at least I'm covered by the letters. 
and I will shoot her a text because not everybody checks their mail. I recently learned any millennials out there might agree with me here. I'm hearing from a lot of the millennials. They don't check their mailboxes if they live in apartment complexes or neighborhoods where there's just a bank of mailboxes. They don't check it. So these letters are going to be useless for those people unless I send a text. Hey, Beck, I sent you something in the mail today. Go check your, check your mailbox tomorrow. And then she will. Um, I find that these letters are really valuable. I find that my hosts, when I get to the house, they're pinned up on her refrigerator. Um, Tracy Pennick, if you're on the call, Tracy hosted with me 100 years ago. And when I got to her house, the letter was magneted up on her refrigerator. I also find, because letter number one, for anyone who's familiar with these letters, letter number one is a Brussels sprouts recipe. Raise your hand if you like Brussels sprouts. Less than half. I do too, Linda. Um, but less than half of the people out there do. And I'd say 50% of my hosts get that first letter and they call me. It's a great way to get your hosts to call you. They call me like, hey, um, I just got your letter and we're not really Brussels sprouts. Do we really have to make this recipe for the party? And that's my opportunity to say, you didn't read the letter, did you? Read it, read it and read the ones that are coming. We're not doing that recipe. It's just a little something, something to keep you interested keep you to keep me on your mind and it's a recipe for you but i'll tell you what you don't like brussels sprouts i'm going to email you a different recipe um but no worries we're not making that one at your party but i'm so glad you called while i've got you on the phone how are you doing following up with people how are those rsvps coming along it's a great way to just get that line of communication open and she's the one who initiates it um so we want to be boosting outside orders Remember I told Becky that I offer an incentive for collecting $250 in outside orders. Um, after the show, we want to boost the after orders. Remember we want five, 15, five. So when the party's over, it's not really over. On the outside of the envelope or the, the folder or on the party planner that home office is, is now providing, there's a place where you can put where the party is at currently, where the, where the sales are currently Hang at. On. Thank the goal, you. The goal that they want to hit, what they're going to hit, you know, with this many more orders, this many more sales. And I also will take that little area and I'll say, okay, Becky, so who said they were coming but then didn't show up? Stacy was going to come, Stephanie was going to come, Mickey was going to come, and Kathy was going to come, and none of them made it. So write their names right here. Those are the people you want to follow up with. Like, hey, Steph, Stace, Tiffany, Kathy, Mickey, I'm sorry you made I'm sorry you didn't make it. You really missed out on this delicious recipe. Would you like to place an order? Here's my link. I can drop a catalog at your office. And speaking of dropping catalogs at the office, if most of the time those catalogs that are left in the host folder, she doesn't know what to do with them. Our host has no idea what to do with those folders or with those catalogs. So we need to give her the words. So Becky, those catalogs that I gave you, Sam, can you please? Um, those catalogs that I gave you, here's what I want you to do with them. I want you to pass them around at the office. I want you to put an order form in it and I want you to take the first one to Stephanie's desk and say, hey Steph, I'm so sorry you're not gonna be able to make it to my pamper check party, but here's the catalog in an order form. Take a look through, see what you'd like. I'm gonna come back to your desk tomorrow at lunchtime and pick up your order and the catalog because I have other people waiting to see it. So I have just told her, or Becky has just told her, we expect an order from you and other people are waiting. So there's peer pressure to get that catalog. So she's going to feel like, oh, I guess I really should place an order. So you need to give Becky the words to use with her non-arriving guests, her, her, her friends who can't come. Feed her the words to use because she doesn't know what to say. She's not a Pamper Chef consultant. There's so much of this that we take for granted. We just assume they know what to do, what to say. And the biggest, biggest, in no uncertain terms, Becky, as you're inviting people, the one thing I do not want you to say to them is this. Just show up, I just need warm bodies. Because Becky, warm bodies don't do you any good. You want people who are gonna come and shop because if they come and eat your food, they're just gonna cost you money. But if they come and eat your food and shop, then you're good. Speaking of saving you money, as you're calling around, because two days before the party, and these are all things I go over with her throughout. Um, two days before the party, I want you to give everyone a quick call say, hey, Linda, I'm so excited to see you at my party on Saturday at two o'clock. Are you coming? Great. And Linda's immediately going to say, because we were all raised by good mamas, Linda's going to say, of course I'm coming. Can I bring you anything? 
and you're going to be inclined to say, no, just bring your pretty self. No, no, no. What I want you to say is, you know what, Linda, it would be great if you just brought your favorite bottle of wine, whatever you'd like to drink. You know why? That way you as, you as the host don't have to spend money on the booze. <laughs> Linda's got a big grin. Linda's like, I'll bring my wine. Um, so that's another little tip I tell my host. Making those reminder calls, I also tell my hosts. And when you're making those reminder calls, I want you to tell each of your guests who's coming to bring at least one adult guest. She bring as many as she wants, but please bring at least one. Bring your sister, your mother, bring your neighbor, bring somebody who's never met me. More people means more fun. And Becky, more people means more orders and more people and more orders means more free stuff for you. Because what do we want, Becky? Lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people, lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people. See, and I got Becky bopping along with me. And every time I talk to Becky, I'm going to be reminding her, lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people. So we, now we know who she should be calling after the show. We should, she knows who to be calling before the show. Um, rewinding at the very beginning, something I did leave off. Um, Actually, no, I'm sorry, at the very, well, I, I kind of do it at the beginning and the end. Um, when I send Becky home from today's party, she's going to take the catalog that she got at Tiffany's party because I, I send them all home with their catalog. And I say, Becky, when you get home tonight, I want you to grab a glass of wine or a hot cocoa or tea or whatever you like to drink, climb into bed with this catalog and a Sharpie, and go to town, start circling everything you want because I want her emotionally involved. I want her emotionally invested in this party. I want her wanting that cooking blender, that deluxe cooking blender. I want her wanting it so bad she can taste it. I want her wanting that deep covered baker, that, that nonstick stainless steel wok. And I want her to have an idea of how much dollar value in stuff that she wants. And then after the demonstration is over, I say the same exact thing. And typically Becky's spouse or partner is hanging around as the guests are leaving. And I will say to her spouse or partner, did you know that had Becky been the consultant at today's show, she would have made about 290 bucks. <laughs> but I was the consultant. She can be the consultant at the next one. You say that to her partner and he's like, what? Becky, why aren't you doing this? So you planted a recruiting seed with her partner. And then you say, so back tonight, take this catalog. Now that you've seen the demo and you've seen even more products, Take the catalog, take your Sharpie, and go to town. And think in terms of what stuff's in the new consultant kit, what stuff is stuff on your wish list, and we may be able to get you all of it. With your shopping spree, get you the stuff that you want that's not in the new consultant kit, get you the new consultant kit, get you that walk, get you that knife lock set as you're running through your new consultant rewards period, and you're going to be made in the shade. Um, so I'm, I kind of bounce all over and I do apologize for that. Now you all know what it's like to be at one of my cooking shows. I'm kind of all over the place. I warn all my guests at my shows. I am all over the place. You got to kind of chase me. Um, so you guys understand today's preparation determines tomorrow's success. And you understand that your guests, your hosts need what? Lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people, lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. And when do we make our money and where do we go to pick it up? We make our money during the host coaching. We show up at the party to pick it up. Now, all y'all who are virtual hands, it all applies for your virtual shows exactly the same. Exactly the same. No change. And if you're not host coaching your virtuals, you're not making as much money as you could. It's as simple as that because host coaching is where we make our money. Does anybody, did, did, I, did I go over? Was I supposed to be 30 minutes? Becky? You can take as much time as you need, dear. We have until eight o'clock. So okay. if you have anything else you want to add, um, go for it. I think I hit, oh gosh, no. I skipped a whole page here. <laughs> Oh, page. Rewind. Do it all over again. I thought when I was talking about the recruiting with the spouse thing, I knew I missed the recruiting in the beginning. Um, <laughs> okay. In the beginning, when I first book her, once I get that guest list, I go, I send her the host packet. Nine out of 10 hosts don't open the packet. Whose fault is that? 
theirs or mine. Mine. My job to make sure they open up that host packet. So I mail Becky the host packet on Monday. I call her on Thursday. Becky, did you have a chance to open up that packet yet? No? Okay, grab it right now. Let's go over it together. Of course, when I make the phone call, do you have a couple of minutes to talk? I used to always start with that. Um, we go over it together on the phone because if she says to you, yeah, I had a chance. I opened it. Great. Let's go over it together. We're going to go over it together. I want to make sure she understands each of it. I go over the order forms and how to properly fill them out. And you want to make sure, you know, they understand how tax is, you know, whether shipping is taxed in your state, whether, whether you guys are on direct ship or not, how that, you know, cause it's different for everybody. And then I say, Becky, have you ever thought about doing something like Camper Jeff? Because did you know that as a hostess, you can use part of your shopping spree to offset the cost of a new consultant kit? And I'm not really good at math, but if I do quick math in my head, I think you can start your business for as little as $49. And this month, you could make that $49 investment and get it all reimbursed in your first 30 days. You could buy whichever kit you want and get a 100% kit rebate. Have you ever thought about doing something like this? And she's going to be like, hmm. I don't know, not really. Okay, we'll revisit. And on my next call with her, I bring it up again. Saw that kit credit coupon, right? Pretty good deal, huh? Could you imagine not having to go to work every day? Could you imagine what an extra thousand dollars a month would do for your family? I know you were saying that you're trying to get a car for your teenager. Did you know that when you get a car for your teenager, there's insurance to go with it? A couple of shows a month could take care of that. And then of course, again, at at the end of the show, when I'm leaving her house, I mention it to her and the partner. So then I've got both of them on board. And then when we're closing the show and we're going over her wish list, and I'm helping her figure out how, you know, this is going to be a free item, this is going to be a half price item. You know, if you move this to the half price item column and you'll have this much left in the free shopping spree column, you could take that much towards the new consultant kit. And by this time next month, you can have $1,000 in your wallet to put towards a car for your kid or the braces or the college fund. So you want to be dropping those. Um, you want to be dropping those recruiting seeds throughout. That was the page I missed, but we got it. All right. Does anybody have any questions? So I think there's some. In, woo, I think there's some in the chat box. I'm just going to go through for you real quick. I don't know how to access. Wait, let me see if I can. Hi, Dr. Girl. Um, so are you using the new host coaching tab under um, the party screens? I am slowly morphing over to that. Those of you who know me, you know I'm very old school. I am paper. I am paper calendar. I am postage stamp. I am not big on digital. And I, I really, really love the personal feel of getting something in the mail. And I've been um, battling violently with Eric and tech support. I'm trying to get those host coaching letters back. We've we're, we've been going like nine rounds in a boxing ring. He knows me very well now. Um, at, the, at the very least, I'm hoping that he will make that the host coaching tab stuff, things that can be printed. Because I really feel strongly that getting things in the mail is a lot more impactful than getting a text or getting an email or getting a, a digital something. There, You know, I, I can't tell you how many times and half of you that are on this screen right now, you know it. You'll text me and you don't hear back from me for like three days. And it's not because I'm ignoring you. And it's not because I don't care about you. It's because 97 things came at me at once and I was driving. You know, and, and I've got the menopause brain. So things fall out. And, you know, but if I send you something in the mail, if you send me something in the I mean, I, I can't turn my screen. I have a wall over here that's just cards. Thank you cards. Somebody sends me a thank you card. It goes on my wall so that when I'm having a lousy day, I can look at it. I have host after host after host, especially the 40 to 60 age will call me and say, oh my gosh, thank you for the thank you card. I can't tell you the last time someone sent me a thank you card. There's something about getting something in the mail, whether it's the host coaching letters, the thank you for booking with me letter. Oh, and after the show, when I close, so the day after the show, the morning after, the first thing I do, I write out the thank you cards for those who booked. And immediately a thank you card goes out to Becky saying, thank you so much for opening your home and putting out that lovely spread. 
Your dog was adorable. It was great to meet your Nana. I always include personal things. So it's blatantly obvious that I'm not just writing these and, you know, writing them en masse and sending them all. I'm writing a personal one for each host. And in that, P.S., I, I can't wait to see all the free stuff you get. And I, uh, how do I word it? And I would love nothing more than to have you join our team and to be able to work alongside you in this business. And I include a kit credit coupon, which I don't think we're going to have access to anymore. Um, but I will still include that wording in each thank you card because people need to hear things four or five times before it sinks in. And I want her to know after working with you as my host, I value you as a person, I respect you as a person, and I would be honored to work alongside you in this business. So just one more time to plant the seed. Go Bye, Carol. See you waving. You waving at me, Carol? Yes, hi. <laughs> I, I just want to say, because you're being super humble, for those people who don't know Carolyn, Carolyn sells, and, and I'm not talking about once in a while. I'm talking about every single month, every single year, year after year. Anywhere between a bad month for her is selling about $12,000, anywhere between twelve dollars to $18,000 a month. Now, there was a one month I did 19,000 and 900 and something and Carol wanted to kill me that I didn't throw in an extra 20 bucks to knock it to 20,000. <laughs> you yelled at me that 20, day, Carol. Exactly. You yelled at and me. And now, I, for those of you thinking, you know what, this is a lot of work. This is a lot of mailing and writing and keeping up with it. I just want to say, number one, if you do what Carolyn says, which is keep it organized by doing it boom, boom, boom. No, it's a lot less work. But number two, she is getting paid for this work Absolutely. because and she's it's really, getting It's just paid a matter of having a system. Sales. And those of you, I also want to really emphasize something hugely important. If you are struggling with booking, the number one reason consultants struggle with bookings is because of low attendance. As I, you've heard me say a million times, it's really hard to get four bookings from a party that has two people at it. So attendance is everything. And attendance is what this host coaching is all about. She is getting paid in spades for doing the work that she's doing. So those of you who are saying, that's a lot of work, I'm not willing to do that work, you have to be willing to have lower attendance and a much lower paycheck. So any of you who know me know that I can throw a tantrum better than your four-year-old. Carol knows it. <laughs> Boy, Carol, Carol's on the receiving end of it a lot. Um, years ago, I, I want to go back to 2005. It was right before I promoted. It was January. I promoted in July of 2005. In January of 2005, our sales manager, our regional sales manager, came to visit our team. And she suggested that we mail out postcard invitations for our shows. And I was like, no, I was a single mom. I was not going to spend postcard stamps were 26 cents each. Are you kidding me? You want me to pay 26 cents times 40? Are you out of your mind? Do you know the bills I have? I, there's, there's, I mean, I, this poor woman came to train us and I went off. Um, background, I'm from New Jersey and it's taken me a long time to build up my filter. I'm not very well filtered now. You can only imagine what I was like in 2005. I was very, very rough around the edges. I'm still a little rough. I was, and I gave it to this girl something fierce. Karen Logston was her name, and I still feel bad about it. I am not. Are you, are you out of your mind? I'm supposed to spend 26 cents times 40. I mean, I went nuts. And she challenged me. I like a challenge. She said, I challenge you to do this for six months, just six months try it for six 
months. And at the end of those six months, I'm going to call you. And she pulled out her calendar and she wrote the date and my phone number. And she was going to call me in six months. I was like, are you challenging me? Do you, me you're, you're going to challenge me? <clears throat> that was all it took. So remember I said that was January? And what did I do on June 30th? I promoted to direct. All because I went from having shows with four to six guests to suddenly having shows with 14 to 16 guests. I went to, from having shows that were yeah, maybe a $400 show average to having shows that were eight to thousand, 800 to $1,000 show average. All because I rose to the challenge and I started sending those invitations. So you guys, I'm going to challenge each and every one of you. Try it for six months. Right now is August 14th, 13th, September, October, November, December, January, February. I'll bet you five bucks, five bucks, at least three of you on this screen, <laughs> if you rise to the challenge, will promote to director in those six months if you just suck it up. And I'm sorry, stamps are more than 26 cents each now, still worth every cent. And it's a tax write-off. And, yeah, and it's a tax write-off. But I am telling you, it changed everything. It really did. So I wanna add something because, you know, we're all sitting here and we're listening to you, Carolyn, and we're like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. No, I'm not. Last week on, on last week's training, we talked about branding yourself, right? Branding yourself is so important in this business for a lot of different reasons, whether you're a cooking show consultant, a virtual consultant, or both. And what Carolyn has done is branded herself. Her customers know her, her hosts know her, they know her to be a successful consultant that is going to help them get every single thing on their wish list and more. And what you don't understand maybe at this point, guys, is that if you have a good party, that host is gonna tell one or two people, right? If you have a lousy party, she's gonna tell 12 people. Exactly. And so you have the option of how you wanna be branded and only you control that. Only you do. I have hosts who book with me. They know many, many consultants in the area and they say, I book with you because you make it easy for me. Exactly. You mail out the invitations. You text me the exact words to say to people to get them to order outside of the party. You do all of this, which makes it easier for me to have a party. They tell me they book with me because they know that if they do it, if I if they do what I tell them, they'll have a successful show. Now, does every host do what I tell them to do? No. And do I sometimes go, oh, you know what? I really need to fill this date. I will just let her handle the invitations if she's not, you know. Sometimes, yeah, I have to back down and say, fine, you know what, Linda, you're going to be a real bear about giving me the guest list, but I really need that date filled. Fine, we'll do it your way. And I'd say it goes 50-50. Um, and in that 50% of the time that we do it her way and the show tanks, I will say to her after the show, okay, so this time we did it your way and this is the results that we got. I'm going to rebook you. Let's put you on the calendar for this same day next year, but next time we're gonna do it my way. You see what happens. I can't tell you, I've lost count of how many hosts I've done that with. The very first one I did that with, her name was Patty, and it was another consultant who gave me those words to say, you know, that this time we did it your way, next time we do it my way. Her first show was $200, her second show was $1,200. And she had show after show with me after that. Sometimes it's a matter of proving yourself to them. You need to build the credibility. Awesome. But when your host, um, for instance, I had a show last month and I got three bookings at her show and one of her friends was like, oh, I'll just handle the invitations. And the hostess, uh, Casey, was like, no, you're going to let Carolyn do it because if you don't do it her way, I promise you it's not going to go well. And look at how well it went when I listened and did it Carolyn's way. So you get your hosts on board and that, it, it, they stack on top of one another. The hosts are backing each other up when you get, you know, multiple bookings. So your host becomes part of your, your team. That's awesome. Such a success story you are, my friend. So we have a couple of minutes for questions. Um, so if you guys have questions, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask Miss Carolyn. Carolyn, I have a question. This is Whitney. Hi, Whitney. Whitney with a lovely accent. 
Thank you. I was curious to know, for the virtual shows, do you also do something like an, in, an invite in the mail or do you do like an evite? How do you handle that for the virtual shows? For the virtuals, we do it, we, we keep it digital. Okay. Um, I do the same host coaching for my virtuals though. Okay. I send host coaching letters. Um, I get her on the phone. So you do the same process. The only thing different would be the electronic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I do find I have to coach a little bit harder for the virtuals. A lot harder for the virtuals. <laughs> hey, um, Whitney. Where for those of you who think I put in a lot of time to my cooking shows, I'm not a big fan of virtuals because I have to put in double the time for virtuals. Okay. My time's valuable. Whitney, okay. were you on the call last week with us? No, I missed that, but I do have the link and I will go back and watch that. Okay, so last week I shared my entire host coaching outline. Okay. Um, start to finish with your whoever your leader is within Carol's organization. Mm -hmm. um, you have access to that, so just make sure to message them and ask for that. Okay. And it'll kind of give you a baseline of start to finish, so from the time you book the show to the time closes. Okay. What the process should look like. Okay, thank you. Sure. Who else has a question? Gotta have something, right? I'm, go I'm gonna ask a question that I think a lot of other people have this question. So I'm gonna ask it on their behalf. What happens when you, because I, like you, Carolyn, am a real believer in the power of putting invitations in the mail. Absolute believer. What happens when you have a host who doesn't, just will not provide you with your number of, required number of uh, addresses? So Carol, thank you for sending me the guest list of 19 people. That's a great, great start. Who else can we think of? Um, I see you've got, you know, some coworkers on here. Tell me how you know Jane and Susie. They're neighbors. Great. Do you have any other neighbors? Like, who do you see when you walk your dog? Carol, do you go to the gym? Do you go to yoga? Do you, you know, walk? Who do you see there? I did notice when we were at um, Tiffany's party that you had gorgeous fingernails. Where do you get your nails done? Maybe you can invite your nail tech. Um, tell me a little bit about your family. You've got grown kids. Do they have, you know, some friends, coworkers? Maybe they'd like to invite some of their friends or coworkers. We'll start brainstorming that way. Um, if she just digs in, I'll let it go. And then I'll say, you know, it is a numbers game. Remember, lots of people, lots of orders, lots of orders, lots of people. With 19 people invited, what's 20% of 19? Somebody help me here. Four, right? Okay, we can expect to have about four. And I know you're looking at me going, God, Carolyn, you don't know my friends. My friends are gonna show up. Yes, 10 of your friends are going to say yes. And then the day of the party, the skies are gonna open. And three of them can't come because they just had their hair Brazilian straightened and they can't get it wet. So they're not coming. And Jackie's gonna get in a fight with her husband. Sally's gonna have cramps. Dave and Joe are just gonna be bickering over their dog. So they're not showing up. And Sally, who was gonna bring three guests, well, you just lost all four of them because Sally's car broke down. So we need to over-invite for that reason. Not because I don't think your friends don't love you. I know they love you. I already love you. It's because life happens. So why don't we consider doing this? Since 19 is the max that you have come up with, and that's fine. Like some of us like to keep a tight circle. I get that. Why don't we think about who you can co-host with? Why don't you see if your sister wants to co-host with you? And then she can invite her friend. And then together, we're gonna have a larger crowd. More people means more fun. And here's another thing to think about. When there are four guests at your party, they're all looking around the room going, oh geez, you know, I know she really wanted to earn that walk. And that means I feel obligated to spend a boatload of money in order to help her. And I can't afford that. Whereas when we've got 15 people in the room, they're looking around the room going, you know what? There are so many people here. I can just order what I need and know that she's still gonna get what she wants. There's less pressure on your guests. When there's more people there, so why don't we see, maybe your sister wants to co-host with you, or maybe your BFF wants to co-host with you, because more people means more fun. Does that help? And if they still don't give you a guest list. If they still don't give me the guest list, then we just suck it up and we go. 
Um, because sometime at that show with three guests, one of those guests is going to be my next Karen Hofer, Patrice Simeonakis, Tracy Pennock. You just don't know. You don't know at that show which person in that crowd of four is going to be your next downline director. Because um, that's a question I get a lot. Well, what's the minimum number of people you'll show up for? As long as there's somebody there besides you and your husband. Now, do you want to go grocery shopping and clean your house to get a $20 shopping spree because one person showed up? No. So I want this to be worth your while. In order to make it worth your while and get you the biggest shopping spree possible, you want a lot of people. I'll show up no matter who's there. And I didn't used to do that. I used to be like, got less than four people, screw that, I'm not going. And I don't know if Patrice is on the call right now, but um, about three years ago, uh, I had a kidney infection. It was 90 degrees out and my host was expecting four people. I was in tears. And Patrice was, I think, I think Patrice was coming to observe a show or something for whatever reason. I was on the phone with Patrice and I was like, I, I'm just, I'm canceling, I'm not going. And she's like, like hell you're canceling, get your ass in that car and go. And I was like, oh, I don't feel good. Idea. I went and at that show, there were four guests and her air conditioning was broken. Floridians, you feel me? Air conditioning was broken on a 90 degree day. And I had a kidney infection. Uh, I did the show. We had, I want to say, $800 in sale. One girl showed up straight from the beach as I was packing up my stuff covered in sand and sweat and said, I'm not ordering anything, but I want to get a date on your calendar. She got on my calendar. She had a $1,000 show that led to a booking. At that booking was a girl named Angie. Angie has had a show with me every six months since then. And this, I'm going back to July of 2016. Angie has had a show every June and every January since then. And her shows are never under $1,200. Her last show was $2,000. Had I not shown up at that show where there were four guests and it was 90 degrees, no air conditioning, and I had a kidney infection, I would have missed out on tens of thousands of dollars of sales. So what happens when she doesn't get me her guest list? I coach her like crazy to get outside orders. I coach her like crazy to tell each of those guests to bring two friends with them. Anything we can do to build the attendance, but I show the heck up. And I do the same demo for four people as I would do for 19 people. I'm not gonna speed through it. I'm not gonna take shortcuts. I'm not gonna skip the booking and recruiting games activities. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my all because I never know who's in that audience. Amen. Absolutely. I still remember when Lisa Noto said once, what if your dentist said, you know what, I got all these cancellations, I could be, I could be out on the golf course, I'm just gonna give her half the Novocaine. <laughs> I'm just not gonna do the whole thing. Yeah. It's, you know, <laughs> they deserve to have the full show. Mm -hmm. And here's one. Um, last month, I have a host. She does a show every year. She's done a show every year for 12 years. And um, for those of you who don't know, we live in the community where the Parkland shooting was. So we have a very, very fractured community. This particular host is very vocal on one side of the issue. So she has really alienated herself. So over the last two years, her attendance has dwindled at her shows. She usually has about 18 people at her shows. Um, at her show this summer, she had four. Herself, her sister, her mother, and her sister's mother-in-law. That was it. Uh, she held the show in her mother's apartment, third story walk up. Carolyn was not pleased. Did the show. Wanted to rush through it because at this point I've known her for 15 years. I can't be bothered. Decided, you know what? I'm going to give it my all. I'm just going to do my show. Her sister's mother-in-law booked. We closed that show at over $800 because she collected outside orders. The people at the show spent, I want to say there was maybe $200 in orders at the show. But I could have bailed. I would have missed out on the booking with her mother-in-law, which led to a few other bookings from there. You just show up. You just show up. I mean, what happens with your regular job if you don't show up, right? What happens? So, 
Any other questions, guys? All right, well, mark your calendars for next Tuesday night at 8.30 because you've learned virtual parties, right? We've given you virtual parties and host coaching. We've given you cooking shows and host coaching. And next week, Amanda Jackson is going to teach you okay. to book parties at your cooking shows, my friends. So I promise you, you do not want to miss her training next week. It will be at 8.30, so time, again, is a little bit is different. Is that Central or Eastern? That's Eastern Standard Time, um, 8.30, okay? So make sure to get the information from your director. Um, and all of the documents that Carolyn has will be posted on the Radu page, and the recording will be posted tomorrow morning on the Radu page. Thank you guys so much, and thank you, Carolyn, for an amazing thank training. Thank you. Thank you for organizing this series of trainings. This is just priceless. You thank you. You're so Brandon. welcome. It's the least I can do. I love my sisters. We all love each other. We got the best Pampered Chef family there is. We do. Carol, thank you for fostering the love in our organization. For those of you who have not met people from other organizations, other organizations don't have the relationships like we do. We are so, so lucky. We are family. They are organizations. The, are this is family. an amazing group, guys. And if you are wondering, should I promote to director? The yeah. answer is yes. You want to be part of this group. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. just wanted to say one thing about our